Happy Friday, everyone. I hope you all are lined up to have a fantastic Cinco de Mayo. I just watched Guardians of the Galaxy last night and no spoilers, but what a fantastic movie. I cried several times, no regrets. It was a perfect send off. I hope you're all able to watch it this weekend. It's a way better way to spend your time than playing Redfall. But anyways, back to the news. I'm Stella Chung and in today's fix, Fortnite is now an Olympic esports, well, sort of. Hogwarts Legacy raked in $1 billion and also incorporates a new arachnophobia mode. And Riot Games will pay $100 million after a major lawsuit settlement. <laughs> The Olympics came out with their Olympic esports series for this year on March 1st and listed a lot of weird things. I can't even say games because some of these titles are questionable. Just as a quick recap, there are nine sports in the esports series archery through tic tac bow, baseball via WBSC, e baseball, power pros, chess just on chess.com, cycling on Zwift, the indoor cycling app. Dance through Just Dance, Motorsport in Gran Turismo, Sailing through Virtual Regatta, Taekwondo Virtual Taekwondo, and Tennis through Tennis Clash. When this list was announced, the Olympics faced major backlash. You're calling this the esports series, but not a single actual esports is featured. I mean, the chess tournament is basically just being played on chess.com, and that's not even virtual chess. So why not auto chess? The Olympics didn't come out with any statements after that initial announcement, but now there's a new development with Fortnite being added to the roster. But no, wait, wait, wait. Don't get too excited that the Olympics might actually be adding any esports to the list because they're not. Fortnite is being added to the Olympic esports series 2023 as a sport shooting competition. No, I am not shitting you. The official International Olympic Committee, the IOC, came together with the Singapore National Olympic Council to create a special creative island in Fortnite to host the sport shooting tournament where they test the player's aiming accuracy. This competition will be an international event and the IOC is inviting 12 players from the Fortnite Champion Series to compete. They will not be playing a round of actual Fortnite. This will all be live in person and will happen next month, June 22nd to the 25th. Okay, hold on. I'm throwing off my reporter hat for a second because we really need to talk about this. The IOC is using Fortnite, a third person shooter to host the virtual sports shooting competition. That is actually the dumbest thing I've read this year. They're choosing to do this in Fortnite where the gun bloom is random each time you fire. For my non FPS players, gun bloom is the bullet spread that guns can have. It's a lot like recoil, but causes your bullets to not go directly where your crosshair is lined up due to the spread. Yes, I know every time you fire the first shot in Fortnite is target accurate, but shooting is not what Fortnite is known for. And again, it is third person, not first person. If this was going to be a sports shooting competition, why wouldn't we pick something like CSGO? Those weapons actually have a set bloom pattern and you can practice to offset it. But just in general, why are we using Fortnite for this? I get it's a globally recognized brand, but shooting mechanics are not what makes Fortnite so popular. The creative island thing is kind of cool, but Fortnite excels in so much more than its gunplay, which honestly comes second to a lot of what's actually available to use in the game. The latest update gives you force powers and lightsabers, and the movement tech in Fortnite is actually probably the most impressive thing about the game. Why not have a creative island built where players can help build the island as an obstacle course and do a no-build, strictly movement-based course where they have to beat the best time through managing their stamina, timing jumps and climbs, and perfecting the use of movement tech. I was really hoping for an update and statement from the IOC about their very horrible esports picks, but instead we got this. Honestly, the Olympics should just get rid of the word esports from this competition series name and just call it the E Olympics or something like that, because none of these games are esports related except for Just Dance. But even Just Dance hasn't had an active esports tournament in years. This is just embarrassing at this point. During the Warner Brothers Discovery Company earnings call earlier today, it was revealed that Hogwarts Legacy has sold 15 million copies and made over $1 billion. CEO David Zaslav said that these numbers were worldwide and the team is launching the game on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One platforms today. These sales numbers make Hogwarts Legacy WB's fifth $1 billion plus gaming franchise, setting it at a bar with Lego, DC, Mortal Kombat, and Game of Thrones. Obviously, these numbers are going to grow, especially with the last-gen console versions releasing today. 
The Switch version is coming later in July, which honestly, I had totally forgotten about. But JB Perret, CEO of Global Streaming and Games at WB Discovery, didn't forget about the Switch and even stated that the Switch version specifically was important for sales. We see that as a probably much bigger install base and fan base. We see a much bigger upside probably from that release, certainly than the PS5 and Xbox Series release. Currently, Hogwarts Legacy remains the highest selling game of the year so far and hasn't been competing with anything else. Though, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom will probably give it a run for its money once it releases in a week. Staying on Hogwarts Legacy news, for all of my arachnophobic gamers out there, you can breathe now because WB Games just added an option to get rid of spiders in the game. Well, okay, so you can't get rid of them completely with the flick of your wand, but you can enable the arachnophobia mode, which removes a lot of spidery features. According to the patch notes, the arachnophobia mode includes the ability to change all enemy spider appearances, reduce or remove spider noises and ground effect spawners, and get rid of spider corpses around the world. Unfortunately, the spider images in the field guide will stay the same, but this mode should help a lot of arachnophobic players just be able to play on. Hogwarts Legacy tweeted out a preview of how the mode would play and the spider looks like a really dumb blob with roller skates. It's actually really dumb looking, but it's super cute. I love it. I'm so glad to see more games adapt to include arachnophobia mode, and Grounded did a fantastic job of implementing a highly customizable safe mode before the game even officially launched. Grounded may not have been the first game to add this anti-spider mode, but it definitely was the most prominent game to have added the mode during its early access days. Just having the option to turn off spider features was a huge quality of life mode since arachnophobia is one of the more common phobias. If the safe mode helps players enjoy games they want to play, why not add the option more often? I'm so glad to see more games adopt these safe modes. Back in 2018, a lawsuit was filed against Riot Games for gender-based discrimination. Today, a global settlement agreement will see Riot pay out a total of $100 million to resolve this lawsuit. The agreement reached will have Riot pay $80 million to all current and former full-time employees and temporary agency contractors in California who identify as women and worked at the company from November 2014 to today. The other $20 million will go towards attorney's fees and expenses. In addition to this payment, Riot has agreed to have its internal reporting and pay equity processes monitored by a third-party company that is approved by both Riot and the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing for the next three years. A spokesperson for Riot gave this statement that while we're proud of how far we've come since 2018, we must also take responsibility for the past. We hope that the settlement properly acknowledges those who had negative experiences at Riot and demonstrates our desire to lead by example in bringing more accountability and equality to the games industry. Jeannie Harrison, the law firm representing those affected by Riot's gender discrimination, also released a statement today saying, this is a great day for the women of Riot Games and for women at all video game and tech companies who deserve a workplace that is free of harassment and discrimination. We appreciate Riot's introspection and work since 2018 toward becoming a more diverse and inclusive company, its willingness to take responsibility for the past and its commitment to continued fairness and equality in the future. I'm really glad to see this lawsuit come to a productive head and hopefully this is the change Riot leadership needs to treat everyone fairly at the company. This isn't a fix, but it's a start, and I certainly hope that Riot will keep true to their statements of wanting to be more accountable and bring more equality into the games industry. How do you feel about the Olympics esports games? Actually, you know what? Do me one better and let us know what your Olympic esports lineup would be if you could completely redo the series. But now that you're all caught up on the news, check out our Redfall performance review to see how the game fares on different consoles. Or don't, I won't be mad. Don't forget to follow us on all of your social platforms, subscribe to us on Snapchat, and keep on gaming. I'm Stella Chung, and I'll see you next time.